Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we've got another gun gripe episode for you. Uh, this is something that we've been kind of kicking back and forth the last couple of weeks and kind of joking about amongst ourselves. And arguing about. And arguing about a little <laughs> bit. Range moochers. I got to thinking about this the other day. Like, th this is kind of a, literally, a universal gun gripe. Like, well. this is something that it goes through everybody's heads at some point. You're at the range, you're hanging out, you're doing your thing. And some guy comes up and wants to bum ammo or wants to come up and shoot your gun or something and, of course, has nothing. He just wants to shoot your gun and that's and it. That, the look comes out. Yeah. Range moochers. That's a pretty pretty considerable gun gripe. Man. It is, and probably everybody has experienced that at some point. Yeah. It, I don't know. We we were kind of arguing about it a little bit. Like, Erica would have some points and be like, no, I hate that crap. I'm like, well. It's not too bad. It depends. I mean, it depends. You know, like, I'm a nice guy, but I have my limits. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, it, it depends. You know, if it, it just seems like there's always like that range fly that comes to the range and, and like they never have their own ammo. They don't bring their own guns. And if they do bring their own guns, they don't have hardly any ammo for it. And then they want to show up to a shoot and go around like shoot everybody's stuff. And they expect you to just be okay with like giving all your ammo away, and it's just hey man, there's always like there's that one range fly that does hey man, that. Man, I want to shoot this gun, but I I, I don't have no ammo. I, I, can I borrow some or whatever? No, it can I mean, can I borrow some ammo? What does how do that you mean? borrow ammo? <laughs> it's like you know, well, here's the brass, so you can reload it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and 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 I'm not calling anybody out here, okay? But I am gonna call somebody out, not by name or anything, Me? but. You know, it, it's like one of the, no, not you. Oh, you oh, mooch good. all the time. You're, oh. you're just a, a life moocher in period, in, in general. What can I say? But like, the, the thing is, is like, somebody finds out that like, you're a gun guy and you've got lots of ammo laying around. And, and here, here's another aspect of the range mooching aspect is when people go, oh, uh, hey, you got any ammo? Uh, hey, you ha do you have some 45 ammo? And like they know you own a 45 and they know you have 45 ammo and it's like they know you're a gun guy so all of a sudden you're a gun store like you get a text from some person that goes <laughs> hey uh you have a magazine for an m1 carbine <laughs> they know you own two m1 carbines like why ask that they know you have it like and i've just gotten to the point when i get those texts from people like just ignore them friends of mine i just go yeah cabela sells them or or, or <laughs> gander mountain or yeah go online and go to brownells or whatever you know and i'll just tell them well yeah at the store where i bought mine like everybody wants to treat you like you're a walking gun store because i know you're a gun nut like the guys that help us out you know with with videos and stuff and props and all that <laughs> like people will ask them it's like hey can you uh can you get me a good price on such and such like what are you talking about I don't work at a gun store. Like, good lord. Yeah, I mean, like, they, they think that you own a gun store just because you, you know, own a few guns. And, and like, you're the go-to person. Now, the other side of that argument would be that, as a gun owner, you are somewhat an ambassador to the Second Amendment. And if there's someone who's curious about guns... Now, if I'm at the range and a kid comes up to me and says, Hey, uh, can I shoot your twenty two? Well, I will give him an entire brick of twenty two. That's fine. He can shoot all the twenty two he wants. Because I want that kid to grow up to love guns. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, if it's a young kid or a youngster that is curious about guns, I will give them every round I've got if that's mm -hmm. what it takes to make them love guns. Excuse me, sir. Can I shoot your torch? No, go away now. Get out of here, kid. <gasps> got any money? Got any money? <laughs> like, give me your lunch money. No, I'm not going to do that. You know. So <laughs> there, there is a fine line there. And being an ambassador to the Second Amendment Everybody is to some degree. If you are a gun owner and you love guns and people around you know you love guns and they may not love guns yet, then guess what? To some aspect, you are an ambassador to the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. And if that means giving up a few rounds of ammo to let somebody, uh, you know, maybe turn them over to our side, I think that's a small price to pay. But I think there is a fine line there. Well, the fine line is with the repeat offenders. Yeah. Like, folks that are kind of like buddies of buddies, you know, that always hang out at like shoots and all that kind of stuff. And it's just all the time bumming ammo and like, let me get Never some bring ammo, me never ammo. offer to give you money. Like, hey, you want to shoot one of my guns? That's cool. Just bring some ammo and you can shoot it. I yeah. mean, you know, well, not I mean, a big deal. You wouldn't show up to a racetrack with a gallon of gas and say, hey, Dale Earnhardt Jr., can I take a spin with your car? I got a gallon of gas here. That may not even get you all the way around the track. It may not. I, I don't know. But but the thing is, you know, it's it's like, you know, 
I, I've dealt with it sometimes when I break out the 107. Yeah. You break out the Barrett M107, inevitably you are going to have somebody walk over and go, can I please shoot that 50 cal? Now, I don't mind letting somebody take a shot. Okay, somebody wants to squeeze off a shot with a 50, they'll probably never shoot a 50 again. They'll probably never own a 50. I don't mind letting somebody shoot one round through my, through my uh, M107 just so they can say they did it. But the guy that goes, yeah, let me shoot a whole mag out of it, and they want to load like 10 rounds, boom, 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 and they shoot all 10, and they go, man, that was fun. Can I do it again? Like, no. <laughs> Like, yeah, give me you know, 100 40, bucks yeah. for dang ammo. Like 40, 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it adds up. And it's like, you know, people people that are ra that are in the range moocher category, but then they don't understand that, like, you know, yeah, you can, like, shoot a, a semi-auto 50 or whatever, but, you know, don't, like, melt the guy's dang barrel out mm -hmm. either. You know, you're not just going to rapid fire it just because you're trying to be a bozo yep. and, like, ruin some guy's, you know, $5,000 barrel. My thing is, you like, know, you got to respect people's stuff. That, you know, we, we've got friends that throw like these little, just little private shoots. You know, just to get together and have some fun recreationally, whatnot. Well, just get together and you know, post pictures on Instagram, whatever. You know, yeah. And uh, you know, I'll, I'll bring a bunch of twenty two. I'll bring a pile of twenty two because that's why I love shooting the most, just recreationally. And if there's guys with M sixteen lowers there, sure, everybody's going to want to shoot a drum out of like the 22 SBR or whatever, you know, full yeah. auto. So and like one guy brings the machine gun lower, you bring the ammo. You know, and we all just have a good time. There you it's go. like, hey man, can I shoot a mag through that? It's like, I'm just stuffing mags. Like, yeah. here you go, you know, whatever. Just have yeah. fun, you know, not a yeah, big deal. If, but if somebody brings it, see, that's that's one exception to the range moocher rule is like, if you were equally range mooching, it, then I guess it's more like range resourcing. Like you're, well, get, it's, you're getting together and you know, like one guy brings a cool machine mm -hmm. gun, one guy brings some ammo, one guy maybe brings a few friends to help load some mags. And now you're getting somewhere. Well, that that brings up a thought. Um, you know, if if you if if somebody's there or whatever, and shooting with you, whatever the case is, and they got some cool stuff, and you got some cool stuff. You just kind of you share cool stuff. You know, it's like, hey man, do you mind if I shoot this? You can shoot my whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's fine. It's like, if like, hey man, you mind if I shoot that? Okay, bye. Yeah, I mean it. What just happened? But but there is also it's, it's a respect thing, it, especially you know? if you go to like a, a machine gun shoot where there's a lot of really cool NFA stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Machine guns. It is very 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 hard to not go, man. Uh, yeah, I've got a um, I, I've got a thirty cal can full of a uh, three hundred eight ammo. Can I? Donate this to the calls and let me run a half a belt out of that, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the case, you know, if you're going to donate some ammo, maybe give them some ammo in addition to what you're going to shoot, I don't really see a big deal with that. All they can say is no, and if you ask respectfully, I'm pretty sure it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. And that tends to happen. And a lot of guys that go to machine gun shoots, like um, there used to be this big machine gun shoot in Piedmont, Alabama mm -hmm. that we used to go to all the time. And at Piedmont, almost everybody that attends the shoot has machine guns. So mm -hmm. if you own, I don't know, a transferable AK and AR or what the heck ever, and then the guy next to you has a, I don't know, a, or a PPSH or, or deck gun or PPSH or something, I'm pretty sure he'd love to like run a, a mag through your AK mm -hmm. and you'd let, he'd let you run a mag through his PPSH and then you're even and mm -hmm. everybody just has fun. And it's also, you look at like car shows, all right, guys get together at car shows and they take their, their collectible cars, they clean them up, they polish them, they make them look cool, and they all get together. And what's the point of a car show? Think about it. Why even bother doing that? It's so that enthusiasts who have the same passion for a hobby can get together and enjoy and their share. hobby together. Mm -hmm. Okay? One guy might go to a car show and go, you know what? I've always wanted one of those cars. How much would you take for that car? Well, you know, and, and then they buy and sell and trade and they talk mm -hmm. about the good old days and, and it's it's a social thing. So mm -hmm. very much like a car show is that for car people, uh, a gun show or a, uh, a machine gun shoot mm -hmm. is the same type of thing. You get together and you show off different technology and you have fun and you share resources and you enjoy your hobbies together as a, as a little family. You're a temporary family there for a while. You wouldn't go to a car show and go, "Hey, I got a gallon of gas. Can I, uh, can I do a peel out in your, you know, Shelby in your Shelby Cobra? You know, <laughs> well, <laughs> no. How about no? <laughs> it's just there's a fine line there, and I think it's also a tact thing. Like it you is. have to have a certain tact. Like you, you can't just be obviously like in mooch mode. Like you've got to. There's a, there's a, a way. There's an art." to having a conversation and getting your way with people. I've seen like- Some at, people like that skill. Even at our shoots, like some of the folks who attend, they literally just go from bay to bay. 
burning and, up and you know, like they're not filming or anything. They're not doing any kind of content. They're not really there to network. They just are there to waste ammo. They're just there to burn <laughs> up like, ammo. What is that guy doing? Like, who is that? I don't know. Like, someone burning well, up ammo. I, <laughs> I mean, and, and that's okay, I guess, to some degree. I mean, you look at a really good example. You look at like Industry Day at the Range at Shot oh, Show. Oh God! You know, and don't sometimes, even, uh. sometimes that is just a complete oh. fiasco because. You know, basically, you'll you'll show up, and these companies, that you know, they will they'll give ammo, I guess, for each person to like demo a gun. But like, for instance, if a magazine and a pistol holds like seventeen shots, they'll put five. they're gonna put like five shots in it. And like, and here's the weird thing I've never been able to understand: like, you go to the Smith and Wesson booth at the range day, and a revolver holds five shots, and they or uh, six shots, and they give you like four. No, they don't put, even give you a full cylinder. They'll put, I've seen them put two rounds in there. Like at the end of the day, when they're getting low on ammo, like, oh, we've got to start lo loading them down a little bit. Yeah, they'll put yeah, two but, rounds in the but cylinder. But like, <laughs> they won't even give you a full cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean, you know? Uh, what does it so, mean? So there, there's definitely both ends of the spectrum. And uh, this gripe was mainly just to kind of uh, kindly pick on those that partake of the moochery. Mm hmm. Um, but there is, like we said, both sides of the coin. I mean, you are an ambassador to the Second Amendment. If mm -hmm. someone is mooching off of you at the range, it means that either they are not in a financial situation to afford the, the ammo, or maybe they weren't prepared, or maybe they're just too afraid to buy a certain gun design because they don't know if they're going to like mm -hmm. it. And they're relying on you to do, in their eyes, what's the human thing is to go, yeah, you can try my gun out, man. Go ahead. Shoot a mag. And, mm -hmm. and I'm always the kind of guy, if somebody wants to shoot my guns at the range and I'm at a public range, I will totally let them shoot it, no problem. I never say no, but I still, in the back of my mind, might be well, thinking like, "Man, come on," you know. I, I have my limits. I mean, if if somebody appears to be a no shooting kind of person, you know, it's like they get up there with a gun, they're like, "Yeah," or their gun handling skills are a little yeah, off. Yeah, it's like, whoa, 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 hang on. Let me let me help you with that, just yeah. real quick. Like, yeah, a little bit of instruction goes a long way. They're just like, "Give me that back." Yeah, give yeah. me that back now. <laughs> yeah, but, but but it's important. <laughs> you you ain't right. But but it, oh, but it's okay. You know, it, it's it's all right to receive <laughs> and and give uh, a little bit of constructive criticism when it comes to new shooters. And a lot of times, people that try to mooch off uh, mooch off of you at the range for ammo are probably people that they may not even own a gun yet. Maybe they don't even know if they like a gun or not. And in their mind, they think, oh, well, if I go to the gun range, maybe somebody at the range will let me shoot mm -hmm. their gun. I can kind of see that. I mean, if you went to go, I don't know, for instance, I, I don't really like to play golf. I'm not very good at it. Actually, I'm very horrible at playing golf, but I, sometimes I like to go to the driving range. I guess it would be the equivalent of being a would-be golfer, and you go to the driving range. What have you ever been to the driving range? I have before at Fort Benning. All right, so anyway, oh, so, so well. you go to the driving range. So it would be the equivalent of going to the driving range, and you don't own a driving club or whatever you call it, a, a four wood or whatever the crap you call wood. it. Whatever the heck. Four what they, iron? What do they call it's those iron? dang things? A one wood or, you know, whatever, a driving club. <laughs> we okay, really don't driver. know anything you about You know what golf. the heck I mean, right? Okay, so it would be like showing up and you don't even own a set of golf clubs, much less a driving club. And some guy's got his like $1,500 ping <laughs> Graphite, oh, awesome, like space age alien technology, you know, <laughs> golf club. And you go, hey man, can I shoot a ball with your clubs? And be like, what? Are you high? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so there's a little bit of that. That goes. I mean, oh, we, we all have, <sighs> to some degree, we've all been in that situation where we are the amateur and you are you are an amateur amongst people who are clearly not amateurs. And you're going <laughs> to ask dumb questions. And, and we're all guilty of that moochery to some degree. I mean, it, and it's in every type of industry you can think of. I mean, fishing. I do it all the time. Even fishing. I can't <laughs> tell you how many times that I've been out at, um, you know, even if it's a, a, a somewhat well-known lake and have some guy ask me about fishing equipment. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you, you're not going to loan out fishing equipment to a guy mm -hmm. or whatever. Hey, man, I ran out of bait. You mind if I get some of yours? It's like, yeah, I'll just take some of this fresh-caught LYs that we just tossed off the boat and caught. Well, go. well, it's funny. We, we do that you, all the time. You mentioned that, but, but we do do that. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll be out and about and fishing, and we might be getting to a point where we're, we're somewhat done for the day, and I might have like a half a bucket of live uh, bait left. We'll then, ride around until we find somebody who's like, yeah. we'll creep up on them like, hey man, you need some bait? Well, not even that. Like, we'll get back to where we're going, mm -hmm. and then and there's always that guy that's going to go, hey, y'all caught anything yet today? And, and then we show them, like, some 
awesome speckled trout this long and they're like, what you catching that on? This. Well, of course I'm gonna be a nice guy and say, look, here's the bait I used. I'll tell you what, we're done. Why don't you just take the bait? And I guess I could, you could equate that to a range guy the same way. Like if you're leaving and you only got like half a box of ammo left, mm -hmm. you know, you might, the, the might aisle not. next to you, if you're at an indoor range, you might go, hey man, wanna burn up the rest of this ammo? I'm heading on. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Well, People like, do that. Well, like there was one time in Florida where we met these two fellows, they were kayak fishing. They were having like horrible, horrible luck. Yeah. And we met them, we just started talking. I was like, well, hey, come on, let's go over to this little spot. You guys can get up in a place where we can't get to. So we took them over there and they they caught the lion's share of fish. They did. They you know? enjoyed and themselves was, immensely. And we did too. It was fun. It's always nice like meeting different people. And that's, that, right. that's another aspect of it too, you know. With with guns, you know, you go to the range, you go to shoot the stuff, you meet yeah. new people. That's right. You know? And very yeah. important. Those guys had a great time and it was funny, he was getting like <laughs> right at dark and they're like, Man, if we kayak back, we're not gonna be back before dark. So we hooked their kayaks up to the boat and we like, you know Well they hung out on the boat for a while. I took one of those kayaks up in like skinny water. I was like, Man, this is awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. So see, <laughs> if you weren't open minded enough to go, Hey guys, come on out and have some fun, you wouldn't have got to try out mm -hmm. a kayak. Nope. So see, sometimes I guess the lesson here is that it's okay to, you know, be that guy when it comes to being a range moocher, just so don't, to speak. Just don't be a repeat offender. Just don't be a repeat offender and, and try to bring something to mm -hmm. the table and you might learn that you'll, you'll learn something and you'll discover something. So anyway, that's life. And uh, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. We hope that you uh, kind of saw what we were getting at with this gun gripe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're one of those people, we're not trying to say we hate you or anything. All we're saying is try to try to move on <laughs> to some degree. Baby, you know? change your evil ways. That's right. Well, look, hey, thanks for the support, guys. We appreciate it. We got many more videos on the way, more gripes, more five guns, more facts, uh, more gun reviews. We actually do have some more meltdowns planned. Don't worry, much more on the way. Thank you for the support. We'll catch you next time. Got any 22? No. Hmm.